All right, hello guys, and welcome to my lecture, um, which will become an Ed Puzzle, on pressure and equilibrium. Now, these are these two concepts are going to be huge in understanding the science behind our uh, balloon-powered cars. And before I get into any of the pressure and equilibrium stuff, I wanted to take a quick second to talk about to remind you of kinetic molecular theory, which we explored a little bit last semester. Now, there's a bunch of um, the kinetic molecular theory is a way of looking at uh, molecules and matter, um, specifically gases. And there's a lot of things that go into it, especially if you're studying chemistry. But for our class, all I care is the more general sense. We think of gas molecules as solid, kind of, you know, you can think of them as like bouncy balls or marbles bouncing around. Even though that's not necessarily what they're like, it helps us understand um, how they act. And so we think of them as um, they're always moving. So this is one of the definitions you definitely want to know. And then we can kind of not look at this stuff or this stuff. Um, this is the big one we want to focus on. Um, so their particles of matter are always in motion, like they're small, like bouncy balls or marbles bouncing around. And the collisions of these particles with each other and with um, the walls um, cause the pressure exerted by gases. So um, we'll that will come into play in a second, but think of it as you're adding more molecules to a balloon, you're increasing the react the um, collisions they have with the walls the walls of the balloon and so the balloon expands and so that's how we want to think of it okay so um, I just took this definition for equilibrium right off of Google and what this says is that equilibrium is a state in which opposing forces or influences are balanced and what you need to know because of Newton's laws which state that um, well, there's basically all of the Newton and gas laws kind of go along with equilibrium. So one of Newton's laws is every force will have an opposite and equal, every reaction will have an opposite and equal reaction. And that's because, and then you could think of the laws of thermodynamics, um, energy cannot be created or destroyed, just converted to one form or another. Um, and so what's interesting about that is you can kind of see that equilibrium is kind of this universal phenomenon. The universe is always trying to um, go to equilibrium. And so we can use the example of a balloon. Okay, let's say we have like this deflated balloon here and it's open. Okay, and we have all these gas molecules like the air around the balloon. And when it's opened and deflated, those are gonna be equal. The air inside the balloon is gonna be, um, the, the molecules are gonna be just as spread apart as they are inside the balloon. But then we can, um, if we actually close the balloon and add, we blow into it, we're adding more air. Whoa, that's a terrible balloon, sorry about that. Um, but just for the intents and purposes, you guys can understand. So let's say we close it off and we blew it up. Now what we did is we added a lot more air molecules and I'm gonna try to show that they're a lot closer together now. And they're interacting with the walls of the balloon a lot more than the outside, which might look like that. You can see there's a clear difference between the outside molecules and the inside molecules. So what we've done is we've kind of put, we've, we've created a system where there is not equilibrium. And we have to, in order to do that, it's going to require a force, right? We have to hold the balloon closed. It, it, if you've ever blown a, bl a balloon, you know that you have to, it's pretty difficult to blow the air into it. So we're kind of going against what the universe likes, and that takes a lot of energy. And so equilibrium will, can be seen if we actually open the balloon and allow those air molecules to escape. What you're going to see happen is that these air molecules will start to escape, the balloon will deflate, and that's because the universe wants to get back to equilibrium. So as the air molecules escape, there's going to be less and less in the balloon as it deflates, and then it will stop deflating once the air molecules inside are as spaced out as the air molecules on the outside. And so we see equilibrium all around us with like if you keep a hot cup of coffee out on the counter, it eventually cools to room temperature. That's because um, the hot molecules are going to be slowed down to the, um, that are bouncing around are going to be slowed down to the motion of the, um, the molecules in the surrounding atmosphere. And then also, you can see it in like, if you've ever heard of like diffusion, okay? Um, basically what happens in diffusion and say something like osmosis is that salt is going to travel through cell membranes until the salt on one side content is equal to the salt on the other con side the salt content on the other side. So we see equilibrium all around us. Um, it's constantly happening. 
and um, or the effects of equilibrium, I should say. And the universe just really likes to be at equilibrium. And so it takes a lot of energy to get it out of equilibrium. And then we see reactions when things are trying to go back to equilibrium. So how does that apply to, well, I just kind of showed you what's going on with the balloon. So now to really add more to that, we've talked about pressure. So pressure is a continuous force exerted on or against object by something in, that's in contact with it. And you guys have already seen how, uh, how in kinetic molecular theory, it's the pressure of those um, molecules bouncing on the walls of the balloon, right? As those molecules bounce, they are actually what? Um, subject the balloon to have more pressure on the inside. So as these molecules are moving around, um, they're bouncing into the walls and that's what's making the balloon um, inflate, okay? And so that's just something you have to understand about, um, about this balloon. And so why do our cars work? So when we have our car, right, that we're building here, and let's say we attach a balloon to it in some way, um, What's happening here is that when we blow up our balloons, we're adding a bunch more air molecules than in the surrounding. So we're increasing the pressure inside the balloon. That makes the balloon get bigger as there's more air molecules. And then we hold it shut. And right now what we're doing is we're taking energy to hold it shut and to add all those molecules in there. So what we've done is we've actually increased the energy um, and and you're gonna learn about something called elasticity eventually in one of the Ed puzzles. And so the balloon, it's holding all of that energy from your lungs. So you used your lungs to blow into the balloon, so that took energy. That energy is being transferred and held in the elasticity of the balloon. And then remember the air molecules on the outside are more spread apart. And so when you release that balloon attached to your car, the air molecules are going to more violently escape the back and start to interact with the air molecules all around. And those air molecules are less spread out. So as these fast air molecules um, collide with the slower, um, well, you wouldn't say it's slower, but the less pressurized air molecules on the outside, because remember, inside is more pressure, so we'll put a plus P, and outside is less pressure. So as they interact with that, they're actually going to push, as they collide with these air molecules, they have to make room for them, right? The, air molecule, the more air molecules inside the balloon, as the balloon is trying to reach equilibrium, they're gonna push these air molecules out of the way. And if you remember Newton's first law, every reaction, um, sorry, Newton's second law, every reaction has an opposite and equal reaction. So as they have to make room for themselves, they're going to push the car forward um, as they make room for themselves. So the car is going to be pushed forward because those air molecules are colliding with the surrounding air molecules. So that's how these air pressurized cars are working. And so this has a lot to do eventually with how our weather works and why we feel wind and all that stuff. Um, and now we're just kind of harnessing it and understanding the pressure. So pressure builds up and then the universe or the balloon, you could say, wants to um, reach equilibrium. And in doing so, um, these air molecules interact with each other, which pushes the car forward um, as they escape. And then there's some other things in there like elasticity in the balloon, et cetera. But that's basically what's going on, pressure and equilibrium. And then the last slide I'll show you is just um, this law, and it's actually a mathematical law called Boyle's Law. It's a law stating that the pressure of a given mass of an ideal gas is inversely proportional to its volume at a constant temperature. So what the heck does that mean? A lot of probably stuff in there that maybe doesn't make too much sense. Well, basically, whenever you hear a law like Boyle's Law, we can actually put it in terms of math, which I know not a lot of us like, but it helps us take a look at it. So what happens is, as pressure, P stands for pressure, right? And V stands for volume. So if we take a system where the pressure and volume are at some constant rate, and then what we do is we increase pressure. So if we increase pressure, what's automatically going to happen so that these numbers stay the same is that this is going to have to decrease, right? So. For example, if, we, if the pressure is 2 and the volume is 2, just whatever, it doesn't matter what the units are, but then we increase the pressure over here to 4, and if this is multiplication, what does the new volume have to be? Well, it has to be 1. So well, we can actually see this with the balloon. So if we blow up a balloon, and oh my gosh, that's such a terrible balloon, but let's say we blow up a balloon, the pressure and volume, let's say, are, let's just say they equal um, two times two, so four. But then 
if we add more, um, if we if we squeeze the balloon, what we're doing is we're going to be increase. Well, let's just not even think about that. So this is the law, right? Boyle's law. So as pressure goes up, volume has to go down. So if we if we have a blown up balloon that's closed, and we increase the pressure by squeezing this closed balloon, what are we actually doing to the volume? Well, what did I just say? We're squeezing the balloon, so we're actually decreasing the volume. So Boyle's law can be seen in our cars as um, as we blow up the balloons, the pressure is increased, and the balloons, as the um, if we close off the balloon, we're actually going to be able to see that. And if we squeeze it, then we can see the volume has to go down and that increases the pressure. Now balloons are a little bit trickier to understand with Boyle's Law because balloons actually do expand. Um, so you can kind of see it once the balloon is closed how Boyle's Law is taking effect. But I just wanted to make sure you had some understanding of how Boyle's Law worked. Um, but that's it for this Ed Puzzle and good luck. <laughs>